Hi folks, this is Eugene, and today we're introducing the Shapley Valley and some of its real-life application. So suppose Alice, Bob, and Catherine, they're escaping from the school to hide from an upcoming IB chemistry class, which is taught by an infamously arrogant teacher. The taxi fee would have been, uh, would have costed Alice, Bob, and Catherine each 270 NTD, 350 NTD, and 560 NTD respectively since they have decided to share a cap and to save their allowance what would be the fairest way to split this bill okay so in order to answer this question we must introduce we must first identify what does it mean to be fair so according to lloyd shapley when we're talking about fairness there's three axioms that we must follow which are the axiom of symmetry axiom of dummy players and the axiom of additivity so in summary, for axiom of symmetry, it basically says that for agents that are interchangeable, so they're basically performing the same functions, they should receive the same payoff. So that's fairly intuitive. And then for the second axiom of dummy players, it's saying that for agents that does not add a positive marginal contribution, they should not receive any payoff. So it's the idea that if you can't bring anything else, anything new to the table, then you should not be receiving any utility, any payoff at all. And the third and last one, it's the axiom of additivity. It's basically saying that for every finite games that are separatable, the payoff of these games should also be able to be partitioned into smaller sectors. And Shapley basically says that uh, there's only one unique solution that satisfies all these axioms. And combining these, we give we get the Shapley value. All right, and so in terms of the mathematics, these the uh, these are the the three axioms, and it's all fairly intuitive. So if you're interested, you can pause the video and read it out by yourself. Okay, so now let us first consider um, the question that was given to us. And we call, so here, uh, A, B, C each represents Alice, Bob, and Catherine. All right. And so we call that if Alice, Alice has taken the taxi by herself, then it would cost her 270 NTD, right? And if Bob have taken the taxi by himself, then it would cost him $350. So that's a given. And then notice that these difference in prices also implies something about each of their distance from school. So here they're starting from the school. It's, we could think of it as an origin. And then since Alice is paying the least amount of cost in order to take the taxi, we imply that for Alice, um, her dwelling is D1 distance from the school. And we also and so we're able to imply that d2 is greater than d1 and d3 is greater than d2 which each represents the distance for bob and catherine and their dwellings from school the distance of their dwellings from school okay and so let us move on now after we have modeled the situation we're trying to classify for each alice bob and catherine we're trying to classify their taxi dollars into different subsets. So for sets A, B, C, it's fairly simple. It, it's just Alice, Bob, and Catherine themselves. So for set A, the value associated at 270, which is the cost of the taxi, the cost of taxi that Alice would have to pay. And here for set A, B, what we're looking at, it's we're considering the situation where only Alice and Bob, they're taking the taxi together. So notice that for all these sets at here, we're looking at how, uh, we're, we're looking at what happens if A, B, and C, they don't form a grand coalition and they don't take the taxi together. We're considering the cases of what happens when only Alice and Bob, or when only Bob and Catherine, they're taking the taxi together. And so, uh, so here, suppose, here's the, Here's the taxi, all right? And it's moving in this direction. And so what we're seeing is that we'll first arrive at Alice's home here. 
and then we'll arrive at Bob's home, and then the taxi will just stop here, because Catherine is not in the car, and will not travel to Catherine's dwelling. And so, in the end, the final cost for this trip is still three hundred fifty, which is the same as the cost that Bob would have been paying if he had taken the taxi alone. Right, because we're assuming that A, B, and C, they're all living in the same routine of taxi. And so we give each of these subsets, these coalitions, a different payoffs, which would be useful when later we're trying to calculate each of Alice, Bob's, and Catherine's their marginal contribution to paying the taxi cost. And what's interesting here, it's the last one, it's an empty set, and it's associated with a value of zero which basically means that when neither alice bob or catherine they have that uh they are taking the taxi and so obviously they wouldn't be paying anything to taxi driver and so finally we arrive to this shapley value uh shapley value rule which is that shapley basically tells us how we should divide payoff among different players and this equation may seem a little bit daunting, but the logic behind it is actually fairly intuitive. So here we're seeing that for a coalitional game with N players and a payoff function associated with it, the given payoff for player I would be calculated by the following way, which is we're basically looking at here. This part represents the marginal contribution of player I at here. And we're uh, we're looking at this marginal contribution taken over all possible permutations of how the society could have been made up. So in this case, for example, if we're looking at the payoff for Alice, we'll first try to find out the marginal contribution for Alice in each of different cases, taken over all possible permutations of how the society of Alice, Bob, and Catherine, they could have been made up of. And then we'll sum all of these cases together, which is written in here. Okay, so now I'm going to perform this sample calculation and show you guys how can we calculate the the fair payoff that Alice should have, should uh, should pay if Alice, Bob, and Catherine, they're, they decided to take the taxi together. Okay, so... Uh... First, we look at this part. We're first trying to identify all those coalitions that belongs to a subset of all finite player n that does not include player i. So in this case, if we're trying to find, we're figuring out the payoff for Alice, we must first identify all those coalitions, those subsets that does not include Alice inside. So what are those coalitions? It's basically set B, set C, set B, C, and then this empty set. So here's four subsets that does not involve Alice. And to, to make it easier to see what's going on, I'm going to label these different subsets as one, two, three, four. Okay, and so now we're starting to, now we're trying to sum all these marginal contributions of Alice. And for the first part, we're going to look at set, uh, set B. All right, so here, as factorial, we're saying that how many elements are within this set, which is just one, because there's only B. So one factorial at here. And then uh, how many players are there? So there's three players minus one minus one factorial, okay? And here, we're trying to look at the payoff. So what, what's happening in here is that we're, we're trying to see what's the marginal contribution for Alice. And what we're going to do is we're looking at what's the value of set AB minus the payoff value of set B. So this essentially gives us us um, what is Alice contributing to this set AB, OK? Now we consider the second case, which is for the case of just set C. And there's only one element inside, so it's same one factorial and then 3 minus 1 minus 1. And for payoff, uh, for payoff function, we're looking at the 
union between the coalition and Alice, which is uh, the union of set C and set A would be AC, right? So payoff of AC minus the payoff of just C. Okay, I think you, sh uh, you should get the idea. And then for the third part, and here you see that there's uh, this includes B and C. And so there's two elements within this coalition and we get two factorial. Three minus two minus one factorial. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this calculation. And the union of set BC with A, it would be set ABC. Minus payoff function of BC. Okay, and finally, the fourth case we're looking at here, it would be the empty set. And so, since it's an empty set, there's essentially nothing within this coalition. So it's 0 factorial times 3 minus 0 minus 1. And then the union between empty and A is just A by itself, minus empty set. Okay, now we'll try to cleanse this up a little bit so here's just one and one we can we can just ignore it and then for the value of set a b it is 350 right minus here this value it's also 350 and so it actually cancels this out and equates zero for for the first uh the first part of this summation and then we start looking at here it's again one one AC minus C, it's also zero for here. And here notice this that zero factorial, it's not zero. Zero factorial is actually one. So here two times one times uh, ABC, it's fifth. Oops. Okay. Here. 560 minus 560. So it's still zero. And we look at finally the, the fourth case. We have one times two factorial times. Here we got 270 minus zero. So we actually get 540 in the end. And so what we're calculating is actually this part. It's all summation of the different marginal contributions taken over all possible permutations. And the last step, we're going to divide this over 3 factorial, which is this part. And the answer is 90. Okay, so according to Shapley value, Alice should be paying 90 NTD for this entire trip if Alice, Bob, and Captain are there. They're all sharing the taxi together. Okay, and so if you'd like to try it out yourself, you could try to calculate the Shapley value for Bob and Catherine. And the answer should be 130 and 340. And so these are the answers according to Shapley's value. And you'll notice that these nicely sums up to 560, which is the total cost of this combined trip that it would cost for all three of them. And this particular solution of answer, it also satisfies as satisfies the the three axioms that we talked about earlier and so Alice Bob and Catherine they're all they're all happy with the cost that they're paying